Hey Libra, welcome to July. So this month we are going to focus on the main theme for the month, where to focus your energy, what your challenges will be, and then what we need to release. And the challenges and what we need to release will be particularly important just because we have a Mercury retrograde energy um, that starts any day now. And then um, we're going to look at money and career because on the Facebook page, that's what you guys had voted for being your biggest concern for the month of July. And then we're going to look at love for singles, couples, and then for those of you in undefined relationships, which could be a polyamorous relationship, on again, off again. Maybe you're just like kind of starting to date and it's not Facebook official yet. Okay? So here we go. The main theme for the month for Libra. Um, okay, so a lot of you are feeling like, oh man, I don't really know which direction I'm heading. Um, things might... They're not necessarily feeling hopeless, but a little bit stagnant. It's like you're not really manifesting much because it's really challenging to focus your energy. Um, they say that whatever you're going to give your energy to this month is what you're going to get back, okay? So if you give a lot of love this month, you'll get a lot of love. If you give a lot of compliments, you'll get a lot of compliments. If you tip really well at the coffee shop, you will receive um, money by way of, you know, all of a sudden your electric bill is less than you thought, or you get a refund for something that you didn't expect. Um, maybe you get a bonus at work. Um, you know, but there, the flip side of that is if I spend a lot of time being sad or negative, I will continue to feel sad and negative. If I expect bad things to happen, a lot of bad things are going to happen or if I focus on those things. And, you know, it's kind of like, Think about social media algorithms. Like if I'm constantly looking at posts about really sad shit, you know, I will continue to see tragedy in my feed. This is just one example of how these things kind of flow to us. So um, be really careful about where you're spending your energy and spend it on things that you want to come back to you, okay? Um, so that being said, we said, where should we focus our energy? And they say on your long-term planning. Where do you want to be 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 50 years from now, okay? Where do you want to be in your 80s, in your 70s, in your 60s? What kind of goals do you have there? And then think about how you can make little steps now towards those. You know, how do you want your life to look at that point in time? Um, making those 10-year plans, those 20-year plans, stuff like that, and taking baby steps towards it. And so, for example, I might say, I don't want to work then. I want to live off of um, money I'm making through the stock market. So I might just invest $10 a month through an app like Acorn or um, Ally or whatever. I mean, there's like a bajillion apps that do that that automatically take the money out and invest it somewhere. It's something like that. Um, it might pay off for you up to six times what you would expect by starting this month, okay? So things to think about. What are your challenges? They say the challenges are um, really putting yourself first, caring for yourself. Um, and so the thing is, is for I'm getting especially for like single mothers, right? <laughs> um and so this will apply to everybody in a different way, but I'm going to use that as an example because I'm getting like, they say 40% of the people watching this video will be single moms, which seems like extremely a lot. But okay. So anyway, um, if you're focusing on taking care of yourself on what it is that you need, this will actually help you in your love life, but in all areas of your life, it will help to bring a lot of balance to things um, without like having to put in a lot of effort. Um, so if I take some time, for example, to take a nap, you know, something like that, that pays off for me later because now I have number one, the energy to like spend more meaningful time with my child, um, to get my house clean, to, you know, peruse my dating apps, to whatever. Like, I'm more alert and awake and attentive to other things because I gave myself that time or that care. Um, they're saying, like, things will just really get lucky or work out for you if you're able to put yourself first this month, whether you're a single mom or not, but especially for single moms. So that's interesting. Um, but they say it's a challenge to do that. It's a challenge to really care for yourself first and foremost. Um, I mean, even if 
you have no children. Like a lot of times we put a lot of our effort into work, you know, like, oh, well, I have to meet this deadline, this, 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 and I can't take a break. Um, but in actually taking time for yourself, putting yourself first, taking that day off, um, you come back to the situation with more energy, you're more recharged, okay? And like, actually, a lot, there's a shit ton of research that supports that. Um, okay, so what is it we need to release this month? And they say, you know, it's not like you have fears or anxieties that you need to release. It's just like um, this energy of, well, I can't do that because, okay? Um, it's like, I can't do this because of this. And they're like, well, you can actually do whatever the hell you want. You're coming up with excuses to sort of validate your own fears of what would happen if. So um, I might say, I can't take a vacation because I can't afford it. Um, but maybe there's a very cheap way to take a vacation. Maybe a vacation for me is, you know, setting up a tent in the backyard and just completely disconnecting from um, my phone, you know, from work stuff and all that stuff. And then you come back to life recharge. I mean, there's all of these different excuses about why you can't do something, but you actually can do whatever the fuck you want to. You really can. Um, so let's look at money and career now. And they say, as far as money and career goes, uh, at the end of the day, I think you and your employer or you and your relationship with money or like, um, Maybe you and your clients, if you own your own business, at the end of the day, you want the same things. Um, or maybe you and your colleagues want the same things or your customers. But there's a little bit of bickering and arguing about how to achieve them. Not everybody's on the same page on how to get there. And so if you are able to focus on the main point of what everybody, what all the parties want, this is going to be a lot easier for you. If you can secede how things are approached or how they're done or at what time or at what pace, if you can let that shit go, then you're going to come into this energy where things are a lot more peaceful for you, okay? Where you're kind of moving towards a lot um, like smoother, calmer waters where there's a lot less to worry about. And so like in a household, for example, like let's say you don't work. Um, I might not want to allow, okay, here we go. My daughter always feels like, okay, well, I'm a teenager now. I can do my own laundry. And then I'm like, no, 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 hold the phone. You cannot do the laundry because the last time you did the laundry, the washing machine got flooded with water, like you didn't do it right, whatever, whatever. But if I were just to say, okay, you know what, I'm going to allow you to try this again. I myself would have a lot less laundry to do, right? I would be bitching a lot less and she would feel about all this laundry and responsibility I have as a parent and she would feel really good about herself because now she, you know, in the teen years, you want to be as adult as, as you think you are. <laughs> and so she would feel a lot more adult and like, it would be help for me if I can just release that control about her doing it right. As long as she's trying to do it, like that's actually a really good thing for everybody. Um, and so kind of releasing how or when, like bickering over the approach to the end result, as long as the end result is achieved in one way or another, like it's actually a beneficial thing for everybody and that's where you should be focusing on, that will pay off huge for you in career and money, okay? Now, um, if you are a single Libra, they say there might not be much to be excited about this month, um, but some of that is this uh, energy of having walls up, okay? I'm afraid to get excited about a relationship because it might not work. It's that kind of vibe. And so they say, until we can really get our emotions totally balanced when it comes to dating or looking for a new relationship, that's going to kind of be the energy that you're in. So how do you go about balancing that? And they say it's about letting things go from the past. And so it's not to say that you're not completely over relationships from the past, but you might be um, really still kind of thinking like, okay, well, maybe I'm over this person, but maybe I'm beating myself up because I didn't try hard enough. 
Or maybe I'm beating myself up for staying too long in a relationship that didn't work for me. Um, this month you're going to totally want to purge any of those kind of ideas or um, any regrets that you have in order to kind of find the enthusiasm or excitement moving forward. And they say this doesn't necessarily feel super intuitive and actually is not so much about the retrograde. This is an energy that will extend beyond the retrograde um, if you don't deal with it. So this is very important for Libras who want to find love to let go of the things that they haven't from the past. And they say the thing is, is like Libras are not bitchy, harsh people. And so to really look at things from a realistic lens sometimes requires you to be that way and you don't want to because you want to be like the good person here. But they're saying, you know, this is a choice that you have to make if you want to be like in a lusty, passionate relationship that you're excited about. Um, so for those of you who are coupled, they say, this is not the time period to take things to the next level. This is not a time to move into your partner's house. This is not a time to get engaged. This is not a time to open up joint checking. Um, and they say the reason why is because this month is going to be a little bit funky. Things wouldn't go exactly as planned. Is that because of the retrograde energy? Probably. Um, they say just things wouldn't actually turn out the way that you want them to. So to hold off is the best thing because all I'm kind of getting here is like disappointment. So even though your relationship might be ready to go to the next level, you might find a house that you want to buy together. Um, so you get everything together, you apply for the mortgage, you put in your offer, and then for whatever reason, like you envision yourself like living there together, raising a family, you're so excited, and then the offer falls through. It's that kind of stuff. It has really very little to do with the relationship or little to do with you. Um, but this is not a month to be taking things to the next level because they'll be unnecessarily complicated um, and not because of anything within the relationship. It's just astrology, I think, for the most part. Um, and so they say, you know, so for you guys, this is a good opportunity to do what the single Libras are kind of tasked to do, to um, say, okay, within this relationship, what are some things that I need to get over or move on from? Um, maybe I have a bad habit of criticizing my partner a lot or um, allowing them to kind of treat me as a doormat. Maybe I need to assert more boundaries. So I'm going to work on those things in the relationship right now. And then maybe next month, it would be a time to take things to the next level and then um, things would work out a lot better. So for those of you in undefined relationships, they say, you guys have the best luck this month. Um, you can expect a lot of love, a lot of um, cuddling, like a lot of joy, a lot of happiness. You could, your partner is actually your good luck charm. This would be somebody, or your not partner, um, this would be somebody to gamble with. Um, they're saying this is a month where things seem easy, where there's nothing to really complain about in contrast to other months. Now, you might not necessarily know where this is headed, and you might not trust that it's headed anywhere um, exciting or wonderful. But the thing is, is this month um, just kind of going with the flow can be very good for you, and it can help you to really identify what it is that you truly want, what it is that you really desire. This is a month that's very balanced for those in undefined relationships. So I'm looking forward to talking to you again in August. Uh, have the best July ever. Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20 minute video, uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!